In this video, let us discuss about a synchronization tool called semaphores. Semaphores are variables that are used to signal the status of shared resources to processes. A semaphore yes is an integer variable that apart from initialization is accessed only through two standard atomic operations, weight and signal. The definition of weight is as follows. Weight, the argument is the semaphore variable s, while s less than or equal to zero perform no operation. But as long as this condition is true, it will stay back inside the while loop. Once the condition becomes false, the control will exit from the while loop and the value of the semaphore variable s is decremented by y. The definition of the signal is as follows. It simply increments the value of s by 1. The two operations, weight and signal, are executed atomically. That is, it is not interrupted in the mid of execution by other user process. When one process modifies the semaphore value, no other process can simultaneously modify that same semaphore value. There are two types of semaphores, binary semaphore, which can take only value either 0 or 1. The second one is the counting semaphore, which can take any non-negative integer values. On some systems, binary semaphores are also known as mutex locks, as they are locks that provide for mutual exclusion. So here is a semaphore solution to critical station problem using binary semaphore. So wait on semaphore mutex. So perform the wait operation on the semaphore name mutex. Then perform the critical session and then perform the signal operation on mutex. So here, if the value of semaphore is zero, some other process is in the critical session and the process has to wait till the critical session becomes free. So that is what this so this weight means. So here, if the value of S is less than or equal to zero, some other process is in the critical session and the process has to wait till the critical session becomes free. If the value is equal to one, so that means this condition becomes false. The critical session is free and the process, the process then decrements the value of the semaphore variable, yes. So to indicate that it is going to enter the critical session. So then, so then the process will enter the critical session and execute the same. Since the value of S equal to zero, no other process can enter the critical session while this process is executing its critical session. On leaving the critical session, it increments the value of yes, signaling that yes is free now so that the other process can execute the critical session. So signal mutex means the semaphore value will be incremented by one. So this is how the binary semaphore works. So the counting semaphore indicates the availability of some resource. It is used to control access to a resource that has multiple instances. The semaphore is initialized to the number of resources available. Each process that wishes to use a resource performs a weight operation on the semaphore. If it has a value greater than zero, it is available, else it is being used by some other process. When a process releases a resource, it performs a signal operation. So the signal operation signals the fact that some process has released a resource which can now be used by the process waiting for it. When the count for the semaphore goes to zero, all resources are being used. So 
So after that, the process that we wish to use our resource will block until the count becomes greater than zero. So this is how the counting semaphore works. The main disadvantage of the semaphore definition that was discussed is that it requires busy waiting. While a process is in its critical session, any other process that tries to enter the critical session must loop continuously in the end record. So this is known as busy waiting. So this busy waiting waste, waste CPU cycles that some other process might be able to use productively. This type of semaphore is also called a spin lock because the process spins while waiting for the lock. To overcome the need for busy waiting, we can modify the definition of the wait and signal semaphore operations. When a process executes the wait operation and finds that the semaphore value is not positive, it must wait. However, rather than engaging in busy waiting, the process can block itself. The block operation places a process into a waiting queue associated with the semaphore and the state of the process is switched to the waiting state. Then control is transferred to the CPU scheduler which selects another process to execute. A process that is blocked waiting on the semaphore S should be restarted when some other process executes a signal operation. So this is the modified definition of the wait operation. If S is greater than zero, that means the resource is available, then set S equal to S minus one, meaning that that resource is allocated to the process and it is not currently available. So else the resource is not available. So block the calling process and put it on, on a queue of Q waiting for the semaphore S. So this is the modified definition of the signal operation. So if there are any process waiting for S, then choose one of these process and put to the ready queue. Else set S equal to S plus one, indicating that the resource is right now available. The implementation of a semaphore with a waiting queue may result in a situation where two or more processes are waiting indefinitely for an event that can be caused only by one of the waiting process. When such a state is reached, that process are said to be deadlocked. So this is another disadvantage of using semaphores. So consider the situation like this. So P0 per first performs a wait operation on S, then a wait operation on Q. And after executing the critical session, uh, P0 first signals S and then signal Q. So here, in the case of P1, it performs the wait operation on Q first, and then the wait operation on S. And finally, after executing the critical session, it performs a signal operation on Q and then a signal operation on S. So P0 execute the wait on S and assume that this is, this is a sequence of execution. P0 first execute the wait on S and P1 execute the wait on Q. When P0 tries to, then when P0 tries to execute on Q, it must wait until P1, P1 execute the signal Q. In the same way, P1 must wait until P0 signals yes. So P0 and P1 has been blocked indefinitely. So that means we can say that P0 and P1 are deadlocked. So this is the disadvantage of semaphore. So the semaphore, inappropriate use of semaphore may lead to deadlock situation. The other problem related to deadlock semaphores. Another problem is indefinite blocking or 
starvation a situation where the process wait indefinitely within the semaphore so these are the main disadvantages of using semaphores